So. All right, hi, good morning, everyone. So we're really excited to have you joining us for the third Open Air Graph Community Call. Today, we're going to be going over the beginner's kit and how it can be used for data analysis. Um, but first, we're gonna start off with a brief introduction of the new Open Air Graph user forum uh, by Stefania, um, to which you can find the link in the chat. I'm going to send that now if you'd like to follow along, um, sign up or anything. So let me just put that in there. There we go. Okay, so this is the link uh, to the new Open Air Graph user forum, which we'll be going over. So we kindly ask you to keep your microphones muted during the presentation, just to avoid any background noise. And at the end, we'll have about 25 minutes of discussion where we'll give you the floor to ask any questions. So you can write all your questions in the Google Doc, um, which can also be found here in the chat. And any questions that we don't get to today, uh, we'll answer in the document. So we make sure we get to everything. So following today's community call, there's actually the informational webinar on the recently launched Irish National Open Access Monitor. And this is a huge project using data from the open air graph to support the nation's shift towards 100% open access landscape. As it starts at 12 CET, we must end five minutes early just to allow those interested to head on over. If you're interested in joining the call, um, you can still register, also following the link in the chat. <laughs> so it's gonna send a couple things here, but that's the last one. So, so if you're interested in joining that, it's a really interesting, it's a, again, it's a really big project with open air and the, in Ireland, yeah, so. So yeah, so um, with that said, let's get started. So I'm gonna pass the floor now to Stefania, who's going to present the new Open Air Graph user forum. Great. Thank you. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, hopefully uh, it's everything good for on your side. Um, so yes, we set up uh, a user forum uh, to have a place for uh, for users to take an active role in uh, improving the Open Air Graph. Um, this is a space for sharing knowledge, uh, skills, and interests through an ongoing conversation. Uh, so let's have a look together. Uh, you can access it at uh, openair.flareroom.cloud. Uh, and um, this is the homepage. And as you can see, we've created uh, different uh, categories and subcategories. Uh, this organization is to help uh, everyone uh, uh, to well to 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 get the forum organized and neat and uh, makes make easier for uh, for everyone to to navigate uh, through through the discussion. So the goal here is to have conversations on. Uh, aspects of the graph that uh, are uh, significant to you. Uh, so we encourage you to share uh, your point of view or express your needs based, uh, based on, on your role. Uh, for example, uh, one, one, one great uh, chance that we have is to continue discussing topics that comes up uh, during uh, our community calls. Uh, otherwise, usually when there's a follow up, um, this is uh, this is usually a one-on-one -on -one interaction with uh, with an open air member uh, staff member. So it, it, while on the other hand, using this forum, uh, the entire community can uh, can participate uh, and um, and we can also keep track of the point uh, raised um, and 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 follow up on that. So um, this is a public forum. So discussions are open for viewing. Uh, but of course, if you wish to contribute, uh, you uh, you have to create an account linked uh, to a to an email address and uh, and sign up. Um, and how can you contribute? So uh, first of all, you can uh, you can uh, you can navigate here. You can browse the, the the different categories. So for example, today we are going to talk about the beginner's kit. So beginner's kit is uh, under uh, graph datasets and. Um, if you follow the link here, you can see the discussions that are already there and that are related to this topic. Um, and you can follow that. So, for example, before the before the call, we we 
uh, we posted this message about what the beginner beginner kit is. We'll find out uh, very soon with uh, with Miriam, and um, and we we ask you if you already made some tests. The beginner kit is used for testing the graph and your data analysis code uh, on a smaller data set. Um, so if you're interested, if you if you if you're interested in follow this this topic, uh, you have a button follow here that that you can uh, uh, that you can choose, and this means that every time that there will be a new uh, a new reply to this topic, you will receive an email and you will not lose anything. Uh, you can reply directly here, um, or you can also. If you want to start a new discussion, you can simply start a new discussion and and uh, and and you'll get there. Uh, uh, and it will be in the in this category. Uh, going back to the home page, if you don't find um, or you are unsure of where this the 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 the, the idea that you have uh, where it fits here, you can simply start a new discussion. You will be asked to choose a tag, uh, but this is not mandatory. You can bypass tag requirements and uh, there, and and, uh, and and press OK and uh, and move on with the with your uh, with your post. Um, and there will be there, there will be moderators that will have a look at uh, uh, at your post and. Um, and uh, create a category or put in the right category. So um, uh, this is a very quick uh, uh, round of uh, of the forum. And uh, yes, just an important note that uh, when, when you post a message, it doesn't go live straight away. There's, there's a moderation uh, uh, by one of our uh, members because this this helps to keep the forum tidy and that all messages are in the correct category. Um, for example, if you need personalized assistance on a specific technical issues, the forum is not the place to go, but we have a help desk dedicated for that. So just uh, join the forum uh, to ask questions that the community can help answer. Uh, discuss the graph functionalities, share your experience, and uh, give feedback. And uh, all of this will be will be taken into account uh, and will help us a lot to announce uh, the graph and shape also the, the future of, uh, of the graph. And um, and that's it. I'll leave uh, I'll let you I'll let you play with it after the call because now we have Presentation for Miriam. I'll stop share. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Stefania. So yeah. So again, we invite you all to sign up and get the form rolling with your questions, tips, feedback, and everything. And with that, um, we'll head on over to our presentation. So guiding us through the beginners kit today is Miriam Bagnioni, Open Air Graph Data Curator, Scientist, and Engineer. So now, pass the floor to her. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alan, good morning, everyone. I will share my screen. So, so today we will see uh, a set of examples that we hope will be uh, helpful for you to start working on the uh, open air data set to reply to your research questions. A brief outline. Uh, we are going to see these example queries on the Open Air Beginners Kit. So we will see why we have decided to provide this kit and how we build it out of the graph. Then we will see how to get it and, and run it. And then uh, a bit of, uh, uh, let's say, examples directly on the um, Jupyter Notebook that we use to analyze the data. Then we will see what OpenAir is planning next for, uh, for the kids and uh, the space for discussion. So uh, last time that Claudio uh, presented the, um, these uh, community calls, 
it show uh, the very first part uh, of the pipeline that uh, uh, OpenAI exploits to build the graph, the collection of the data. Today, we are at the opposite end of the pipeline. When everything is done, the graph is ready to be provided by uh, OpenAI to, to the user. But this graph is really, really big. We have uh, a lot of research products, a lot of projects, a lot of organizations, a lot of entities, and many, many relationships. So it can be very difficult uh, for a, a user to get the data and analyze them. So uh, Open Air thought to develop the beginner's kit. Uh, the beginner's kit is a small subset of the graph that can be used on regular computers. This is the main reason why we decided to um, provide this kit, because it can be downloaded and it can be run on a personal laptop. So it is easier uh, to exploring uh, your research question using the open air graph. For example, which Organization, which are the organizations that uh, uh, contributed in projects, and so on and so forth. We thought it as a trading ground because it has uh, the same exact model that we have uh, in the data in the complete data set. So even if it is a smaller subset, you can start uh, understanding how the entities are modeled and how they are connected. Uh, between themselves, which are the semantics that can be exploited to link, uh, for example, uh, results and projects, uh, projects and organization, and so on and so forth. Uh, to this, it comes very useful also the documentation uh, that is uh, linked via the notebook. This training ground will be come very useful when uh, a user decide to delve in the full uh, graph. And it is also a safe space uh, to test and refine the code. You can experiment, as I said before, on the same data, but uh, you don't have to pay to do it. So you can try as many queries as you want. You can also uh, do things uh, wrong and refine your queries. And then when you will uh, use the complete graph, you will maximize the success rate. So uh, what is in the beginner's kit? Uh, we decided to, uh, for this one, select uh, the publications, the, not, not the publications, sorry, there is uh, the, the results the dark publication, data set, software, and other research products that have been published between 30 of June 2023 and 29 of February 2024. Uh, from the selection of this set of results, everything starts. Because once we have defined this subset, we start uh, following direct links to the other entities that are organization, data sources, communities, projects, and so on and so forth. All the entities that are linked via direct link to at least one result are selected to be part of the uh, beginner's kit. And then this set of relation is uh, expanded by including all the relationship between these entities. So we will include the relation between uh, the organizations that are in the set, between the organization and the projects that are in the set, between the results. So this is our subset. This is the subset that we have selected for the um, analysis. A bit uh, for the numbers. So. We have, uh, it is uh, um, the list of the entities, of the number of entities compared to what we uh, find in the, in, the, in the graph, in the, in the graph that is uh, related to the beginner's kit extracted in this period. As you can see, we have uh, a, a certain number of uh, entities that make the analysis uh, meaningful, 
but uh, we do not have, for example, 173 million of publications as we have in the, in, the, in the graph. We have almost 4 million of publications in the data set. We have uh, uh, 8K of data set against the 60 million in the, in the graph and so on and so forth. So all the entities are represented, all the relationship between these entities, but uh, with a smaller volume. This is also to stress the fact that uh, the beginner's kit want to be an example of how the open art graph can be used for the analysis. It won't be the analysis of the entire graph. So just some numbers for uh, uh, that uh, uh, describe the laptop on which the um, uh, beginner's kit run. I have a uh, uh, Macintosh, 2.8 gigahertz uh, of um, processor and so on and so forth. Anyway, these are the uh, specification of my laptop. So it is a regular computer. So how uh, can we get the beginner's kit? We have it deposited as a release in Zenodo and you can go there and download the zip or you can go directly on GitHub and clone the repository. So if you go to GitHub, you will see uh, the README that uh, will explain which are the requirements that you need to make the, uh, the kit running. As you can see, all that you need to do is install the Docker engine and check that the space requirements for uh, the kit to run is uh, accomplished. We decided to create a Docker because in this way, um, everything that uh, is needed to run the, the, the notebook is already, uh, is already uh, loaded in the Docker. The user doesn't need to install anything else than the Docker. So there are the Docker engine. So there are some instructions that uh, uh, guide you through uh, all the steps. So if you uh, decide to get the kit from GitHub, you have to clone the repository. If you decide to get the kit from uh, Zenodo, you just need to download it and zip it. So you go in the folder when you have the repository unzipped and just run uh, this command that uh, um, builds an image of uh, what is in the Docker file. That means that everything that is needed is collected and uh, made available in the image. When the image is done, you can run the container. That means you create an instance of a virtual machine that contains everything that you need and you can uh, assign to it a name and you have to pass it the, the port where it has to co collect, uh, to connect. Uh, you can do also this by using the Docker UI. Here you have the images that have been built. You see, uh, you, you uh, click on the action here to make it, uh, uh, to, to run it. And you will ask, you will be asked about, sorry, you will be asked. Oh, sorry. You will be asked about some configuration to this, uh, the port number and uh, uh, an optional name for the container. And here you have the view of the containers that are running. You can uh, decide to uh, stop the container and start the container by clicking on this arrow. And uh, if you stop it, everything that you've done, the data that you have downloaded will be uh, remain in the, in the container. But if you delete it with the trash, you will lose everything. So if you go and uh, run it again, you won't find anything that you have uh, done uh, until this moment. So let's see uh, a bit of what we have uh, done in the in the kit. So. 
So, sorry, because we have, okay. This is uh, what you see when you uh, select the, the link to uh, connect to the, the Jupyter Lab. You will see this notebook with all the paragraph uh, uh, not run. I ran this already because you never know what can happen during a little demo. So just be sure that uh, uh, everything will be displayed. The first part of the kit is the import of the data. Here we have um, brought the URL of uh, Zenodo of the deposition that, are rel that is relevant to, this, uh, to, the, to the last uh, beginner's kit data set. You can uh, download every data set by just changing the number here, but you have to make sure uh, the model of the data set is compliant with the one used in the kit. We uh, then uh, download the, the running this, this paragraph will automatically download all the files that are contained in the, the position. We'll untart them and put them where they where the notebook expects them to be. So you don't need to um, uh, program anything. You don't need to write any no code to do this. The notebook will do it for you. While he is downloading, you will see uh, what is downloading, what is doing, and where it is. Uh, uh, where, um, at what time uh, it is in the downloading of the various files. Then there is uh, the first part of the of the, of the notebook that will import the needed libraries. And uh, you could say, why we need to have uh, the Spark engine and everything uh, to analyze the data? Why don't we just use Pandas? Uh, this is because it is not doable with pandas because um, it the for, for the memory requirements. So you can load the data of one of the parts of the data set, and you can see uh, some of the information that it is contained in the in this case publication. But uh, if you try to uh, load all of the publications, uh, you will get uh, an error and you will need to restart the kernel. So I haven't done this. If you want to try afterwards, uh, you can do it. So Spark can help us to, to analyze the data. What we need to do first is to create a session with this command. And then we have defined the scheme of the result, the, the, the scheme of the entities that is how the entities are modeled in, uh, in open air. This step is not uh, required. If you don't, if you want to change the, 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 the download of the deposition, the, the beginner kit, you can avoid to run this part and you have to comment uh, the read schema uh, part in the uh, loading of the data. This is this one is needed because in this way the data are uh, read uh, faster, but it is not mandatory. What we once we have read the data, uh, we have to analyze them, and uh, we can do in a very uh, friendly way by creating uh, uh, temporary views. Uh, Spark allows us to do it, and they are very similar to uh, real SQL query that we can um, query uh, by writing uh, SQL and making it execute by a, by a Spark. With this uh, instruction, create or replace the view, we see uh, the publications that we have read uh, will be uh, named as these uh, name when we use them uh, within a, an SQL query. 
So uh, just to see some numbers, we see the number of the entities by uh, writing uh, the, the by writing uh, publications count, and we see the number of publications, data set count, and we see the number of data set, and so on and so forth, just to have uh, the list of the numbers. And we can do the same via SQL. So you don't need to write Python. You can also write uh, the, the same instruction via an SQL, and uh, you can display it uh, nicely uh, using Pandas. You can display it also with a show, but uh, it will not so nice to see. So we decide to use uh, two pandas. This other paragraph uh, show what's inside an example of publication. And it shows, uh, let's say, uh, the model. So we have the author, back success right, container that is the journal. Within the author, we have the list because author is an array. Each author has a full name, a name, a rank, a surname. If present, it has also the, uh, the orchid. In the best of six rights that we have for the uh, uh, result, in this case, it is closed. We have the core code and the, and the schema for the container. Uh, we have the name of the journal, the SSN, and so on and so forth. So we can see uh, how the publication is done and which are the information that we can find within it. We can do the same for the data sources and every one of the entities has a link to the documentation. So you can go and see what is uh, the exact model in the documentation and in its very, very useful when you try to write your own queries to refer always to the documentation. So we have a look at the organization. We have, uh, we, can, we can show also all the feeds that we have for the organization. And this one has two fund ref, different fund refs, and we have the, um, the ROAR, the GRID, ISNI, and so on and so forth. So a, a very general view of each of the entities that we have in the, in the graph. And now uh, we can start to analyze the data. We, can, we, we have called them exercises, but they are very um, common let's say, uh, research questions. So uh, what we can be interested in uh, knowing, which are the relationship that are in the, in the dump. And we want to group them uh, based on the semantics. So this is uh, quite simple because uh, uh, the relation is, uh, as you can see from here, the relation is uh, very simple with uh, as a as a schema, and we have uh, uh, a flat uh, representation. So the source that is the identifier of the of the of the entity, and the source type that specify the entity which type it is, and uh, just the semantics that is the name within the real type element. So to execute this query, we just need to group by real type name and count from the uh, relation table. So you can see here that is provided by is the most used relation. Then we have the host is hosted by that is from for in between results and data sources, sites, and so on and so forth. This one instead is a query that allows you to uh, show information about publishing venues. As I said before, uh, the publishing venues is inside the container element and uh, it is uh, uh, containing the uh, ISSN, EISSN, LEISSN, and the name. So just to see what's inside, we can select directly this information 
from the publications because we do not have a, a venue entity for now, but we will uh, in the near future. So you can see that we have the journal, Mas Iswa, the JME journal, and this is uh, its ISS imprinted, and so on and so forth. This one is, can be uh, a bit more interesting. Count and sort publications by citations. So we need to join the publication with the relation. And uh, we want to uh, count the number of citation per publication. So we need to uh, select as a relation name, a, re a relation type name is cited by. And since uh, in this case, uh, the relation is between result and result, we need to uh, select the, uh, the, the ID of the publication that is uh, cited. And then we can group by publication ID and feed value and do as we did before. We count uh, uh, all the publication that cite mine and we order by the number. So we see that the most cited publication is this uh, DOI the dupe that has uh, this uh, uh, DOI and this PID and so on and so forth. It has uh, three uh, identifiers because it is a um, dupe record and it is merged uh, by uh, entities with uh, uh, have been collected from uh, entities that can mine for that kind of PID. So for example, Crossref and PubMed. So uh, since the relationship so far are bidirectional, but we plan to make them uh, visible just in one direction, we can uh, perform the same query by using the other uh, relation, the site, and uh, changing the element on which the join is done. Instead of the relation source, we should use the relation target for the join with the relations. And we have the same uh, result as before. If you are instead interested in uh, knowing which are, let's say, the, the trends in the research, you can uh, see uh, which is the set of subjects that are most present in the, in the publication in this case. Uh, the subject in the model of open air is an array of uh, subjects and uh, the value, the actual value of the subject is in the element within the array, subject value. So first of all, we select, uh, we define, let's say, a view with this uh, part of the query in which we say, uh, we define a view called terms in which we have uh, all the subjects um, from the publications, for the, all the subjects for the, the publications, but uh, not just uh, all the subjects for the publication. This um, an, uh, explode uh, operation means that um, you create, uh, you repeat the, uh, the rows in the table many times as the number of different values that you have in your array. So uh, we will take all the distinct, all the, te all the terms that are in the set of publications and we can, um, uh, as we did before, uh, group by term and then count the, their number and we order them in the shunning order. So we see that general medicine is the more, uh, uh, is the topic that it is uh, more uh, 
popular, then human, then electrical and electronic engineering, and so on and so forth. And uh, we just show this, but you can uh, think of expanding this kind of queries uh, by, uh, I don't know, exploring which are the organizations uh, that, um, how these terms are split by organizations or by country, of course, by following other relations. And we can also make a similar um, uh, query now showing uh, the journals with the highest number of publication. The journal is in the container element and uh, we collect it from the publication uh, table. What can we do to know which is the journal with the most, the highest number of publication? We take the name and for every publication that we have, we extract the journal. So uh, once we have uh, the journal name, we can group by name and count. So we have the number of publications for uh, each journal and we can display them. So we see uh, the scientific records is the one that uh, as most publication. And then uh, we have International Journal of Molecular Science, PLOS one, and so on and so forth. This one is a bit more uh, complex and um, we can show the number of projects per organization. So uh, the, the organization uh, can have uh, the legal short name empty. So we need to use this coalesh um, option. That means uh, it, it will take the first option that is not null and it will display it. So what do we need to do? We need to uh, join the organization with the relation and by selecting the is participant, we know that uh, the source part of the relation is the organization and that the target part is the project because uh, between organization and project, the only semantic allowed is, is the participant. So selecting this organization, we have this, this relation, sorry, we have the set of organization and the set of projects that are related. And then we select the legal short name or the legal name as the name of the organization. We group by name and we, as before, count. So we see that the University of Cambridge is the one with the, uh, the most, uh, the, the number of projects and then the University of Oxford and then, and so on and so forth. We can do the same uh, on the project side. We can search the projects with the highest number of associated result. Uh, open air, uh, uh, for some of the funders used the unidentified project because we can uh, create, we can have a link uh, to the funder, but we don't know uh, exactly uh, uh, the project to which it should be linked. So by using the unidentified, we can anyway have a link between the publication and the funder, even if not directly uh, to the project. So to know uh, which are the projects with the, with the highest number of publication of associated results, what we need to do, we need to join the products, the, the projects and the uh, with the relation and uh, uh, select the producers uh, uh, semantics, this type. So project produces uh, result. And we know that uh, everything that is on the target is a result. We will select the funder short name, 
the code and the title and by gr and grouping by uh, these three uh, values founder sh founding short name code and title we can see how many uh, publications how many results are associated to each founder we can do it also by manipulating the strings concatenating their values to have just one column instead of uh, three of them and it, it is just to, to, to show that it is possible to manipulate string uh, on, the, on the fly. Okay, this one is uh, always associated to uh, subjects. And uh, this, this time the subject will be uh, get from uh, a controlled vocabulary. We, we, we don't want uh, the scheme of the subject to be keyword, so we will uh, remove the subject with scheme keyword. We, as before, explored the subject, but this time uh, we join the table that we created with, with uh, itself because we want the co-current subject in publication. We join with itself and uh, the join element is the uh, the publication ID and we get the couples of subject. So for example, business and business industry uh, go often together in publication as well as business and medic medicine medical speciality. This one will show the number of research product per organization. So uh, as we did before, uh, we, we have to join the organization with the result, exploiting the semantics is author institution of, of the relation. We will use again the college, legal short name, legal name to get the uh, first string that is not known, and we can count for organization. So CIS is the uh, organization with the most uh, results, and then UM, and then University of Cambridge. Here, we can show, uh, we, we show how we can count the number of research products per type, organization so uh, we always we again meet to perform a join between this time the result the organization and the relation we take uh, the relation that f type is other institution of and have source as um, um, an organization and target as a result. This time we need to select also the results because we need to understand the type to count for that. And we can do it by exploiting this operation, count if. So we count one for this type only if the element type has value publication. The same for data set, the same for software and the same for other. We do as before, a group by organization, and we can show the result. So we, we can see that CAS, it is the one with the most of the research products, and it has uh, mostly publication, then data set, just 88, then software, and then other. And the same as holds for the other um, organizations as well. And now you can be interested in, now that I know uh, how it is distributed between uh, research types, I would like to know uh, the uh, access type for organization. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Miriam. Um, we have 10 minutes left. Um, if... oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> sorry. I am really sorry. No. So I can stop here. And, Lost uh... in the day. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries, no worries, no worries, no worries. Um, okay, yeah. Um, great, so I guess we'll start um, with some questions. So first, I also want to, we actually have a poll uh, for the next uh, 
um, community call covering that covers the beginners kit. So not necessarily the one that will be happening next week or next month, but the next one that covers the beginners kit. Um, what you would like to what you would like to for us to cover. Um, in the Google Doc, I actually created a section, if you choose other, where you can write down specifically what you would like to, if you don't, if none, none of them, what you would like to see. Um, so if you chose other, you can elaborate in the Google Doc. Um, so first we'll go, um, I don't see any hands raised, but we did have a question in the, in the Zoom Q&A. So we have, um, so uh, we have the question, if some curation is made after my analysis that can be helpful for me, for example, more links made by users, better affiliation, metadata, claim of ORCID, et cetera, will I be notified? And how much time will pass between the curation and the APIs that I can find in the Open Air Graph website? It's quite a long one. It's, it's anonymous, so I don't know if who would like to elaborate, who posed the question if they would like to say. Can you, can you repeat it because- Yeah, um, here, maybe I'll put it, um, yeah, here, I'll put it in the chat. That way you can see it as well. Um, okay, so here, we just wanna see, okay. So to, okay, so here we have the question. Ah, if some curation is made after analyzed, um, I, I want to stress that the beginner's kit, it is just a small, very small subset of the graph. It is to get this one at least. It is to get confident with what can be done, what kind of analysis can be, uh, what kind of queries can be replied by exploiting the graph uh, data set. But uh, it is just a toy, this, this example, to start working with the model, to understand how it is, uh, how, the, how, how, how the entities are modeled and how we can put them together to get uh, the answer desired. It is not something that can be, um, let's say, uh, exploited for uh, a real analysis, not the beginner's kit. Open Air uh, plans to uh, provide a copy of the, of the graph data set on a, a, a cloud platform that uh, can be used to perform analytics. So uh, let's say the beginner's kit can be used to understand how to query the data, and then that analysis can be done on the, on the real uh, graph on another platform. Um, do we have any other, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Um, I saw a couple, uh, well, one, but it's already been answered by Claudio. Thank you, Claudio, um, in the chat and in the Google Doc. Um, maybe would some anybody like to elaborate if you chose other for the poll? Um, first of all, I hope, is there any problem with seeing the poll? Did everyone, does everyone have access to it? Just want to make sure there's no issues. Yes, Baptiste? Yes, uh, I choose I chose other. Uh, so probably it's uh, because I'm I'm more uh, on the data center part. So uh, maybe that can fall into organization, but as a data center source, uh, citation of data sets and types of data sets that are cited and type of. Uh, uh, journals or thing like that so as centered from uh, from a data center i think well i don't know if i don't know how many yeah. uh, orchids are uh, yeah for instance to... yes mm. okay some uh, data set centric uh... mm -hmm. okay thank you um, great. Any? I had another question oh, actually yes, in the chat at the at the at the top. 
so when I logged in to the forum, uh, so I created my account and it works. I wonder if there's a plan to have a federated login like there is, like there is in all the EOSC uh, um, uh, tools so that we can log in through our university and, and then uh, we are authenticated uh, remotely. So I don't know if it's in the plan or not. We haven't done this yet because this this is an uh, an experiment. Uh, but uh, but yes, we we hope that the forum can grow and um, we'll we'll invest more and and make it more aligned with the uh, with all the sources in uh, yeah that we have in open air and in EOS, of course. You, you... Sorry, sorry, Miriam. Yes, no, Mi Miriam. I was, I was uh, reading the note done by Baptiste that he would like to have some example in uh, Spark uh, in, um... oh, oh, yeah, this is another, another. No, no, so, 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 so go, go, please. No, 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 no. Uh, it's just that, that, that we haven't done it yet, but, but, but we need to improve it. And, and this is a, this is a great idea to bring it to, uh, I mean, to, to make it better. Sorry. <laughs> Regarding the, uh, as, uh, uh, SparkQL. No, no, that it is understandable that uh, he would like to have. Uh, we can think of um, making it also in uh, in a different way uh, for the next one, so to have some uh, version of this one exploiting other techniques. Well, the, the the first example that you shown in uh, in SQL. Uh, are much shorter when you write them in a sparkle and much easier to read uh, even from an external point of view. Uh, I, I'm, I know SQL and Sparkle. Uh, anytime I do SQL with joins, I get lost. <laughs> when I use Sparkle, I don't get lost because it is straightforward. The join is transparent. Yes, so, yes, yeah. Can, so, I, I think we can do we can do some paragraphs. Maybe one in and, and the following in the following in that makes the same in a different way. Thank you for for this. Great. Uh, and for those interested, I'm sharing the poll results now. I'm just typing them in the chat. Um, this is no way to share the poll directly. Um, so there's that. Great. Um, are there any other questions? There, so this means that in 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 three months we will have will have the a call uh, of the community call based on uh, I mean what what we show an, an example on how to analyze uh, or data related to organizations. That, that right. Is the, that is the idea. Yes. Great. Okay. And then we will take into consideration also the uh, comment of, um, uh, oh my God. At least it will be, it will be noted, it will be noted yes. in, in the, in the, the Google uh, Doc. Yeah. We will uh, uh, have it maybe as a new poll uh, option for the next time. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And especially thank you, Miriam, for I'm the... I'm really sorry. It's no worries. <laughs> no, no. It's never bad to have more information. <laughs> All right. So we're we'll, uh, going to wrap up now. So those interested in the Irish webinar can head on over. Um, thank you, everybody, again. And we'll hope to see you in the next community call. And again, you can find all the notes, recording, and presentations in the Open Air Graph website. Um, they'll be uploaded by the end of the week. So have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.